Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. This is I Allegedly. Got a good one for you today. We're going to talk about how to become your own central bank. That's a term that's been thrown about a lot lately. And I want to give you guys a definition of how you can take over control of your finances and what this means in the coming months and how this is going to affect each and every one of us that are watching this video. Before I get into it, please take a second. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. Please also, don't forget there's hundreds of videos that have already been produced that you can take a look at. And uh, we have an email list that you can sign up for and also a Patreon uh, channel. If you'd like to get more access to me, you can sign up for Patreon. Now, what is a central bank? A central bank is a financial institution that's been given the privilege to be able to create money, print money, and also handle credit for either a country or a group of countries. Now, what we've seen with our central bank is that these are supposed to be non-monetary, non-competitive groups. In other words, they're supposed to be basically independent and free. We've kind of seen over the last two years, this firsthand, that this is not the case. That basically, the central bank in our country is basically on its own entity and it runs itself. Now, they can do whatever they want. They can print the money that they want. They can buy assets. And in our case, they're buying treasuries and different stocks and things like that to the tune of $40 billion a month. That we know of. That's okay. So there's that. Now, we need to be concerned about this because what's being projected is a digital dollar. Now, where this affects you and I is money in your pocket, having dollar bills, $100 bills, whatever you want to call it, cash, is something that has been able to be used to buy things and to run your life. Now, what they want to do is they want to have a digital dollar that would be ran through the Fed and ran through the government. This was, pro uh, was proposed by President Biden on March 9th as just a talking point and we're, we're investigating this. Well, they're not just investigating this. This is getting a major concern because what I found out is that it doesn't matter if you're on the left, the right, the middle, the outside, wherever in this country, people are concerned about this now because it's going to give you zero freedom to handle your own finances. Now. What do I mean by that? First things first, imagine having $100 in a drawer and you can do whatever you want with that $100. Now, imagine that $100 is in a place that someone has their eyes on it and watches where you can spend it. No one wants to see that. No one wants that. Now, the one thing that's talked about with Jerome Powell in the last week was that we want to have anonymity with the digital dollar. It's an absolute lie. It's an absolute lie. So right now, it looks like that I can find 16 different central banks of over 80 central banks that have admitted that they're creating a digital dollar. Now, the problem with it is for their own currency, it's going to create a problem for the constituency and for the common man, okay? Now, we have seen problems where people have not been able to get to their banks and get access to their money worldwide. I'm gonna give you two major examples that you may or may not have heard of. And the first one is Lebanon. Lebanon has been in a financial crisis for three years now, okay? And you can say, oh, Beirut's a mess and it's terrible, la la la, okay? But they, just like every other country, have professionals. What Lebanon did was seize bank accounts and randomly, here's the one thing that's sick, is they seized bank accounts with over $20 million in the bank. Here's, here's what you have. Now what we've done is we've seized the 20 million and we're gonna issue you a check for the balance because the government needs this money. Now that is tragic, guys. Now, I don't have $20 million. I know 99% of you out there don't have $20 million. But the point is, is that this money that they seized from one guy, uh, Ari Youssef, he ran an engineering uh, retirement fund where they put the cash in this retirement fund to build so when people were sick, they would, they would be protected in the future in the instability of Lebanon. Sounds like a good idea, but he had a professional group that has destroyed these engineers. So you don't think this could happen? Oh, Dan, that will never happen here in the States. They would never do that. Yes, could happen. It could happen this week. So 
Next thing is the talk show host, Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams has had a talk show for a few years now and uh, 57 years old. She's uh, just had some mental uh, instability lately where hasn't been able to have the show and she's off the air right now. Now, here's the thing. She goes to Wells Fargo Bank to withdraw money to go relax in Miami and Wells Fargo Bank says, no, we were told that you're unstable and we've seized your accounts to protect you from yourself. Huh? Okay, think about this, guys. No court order, no no uh, guardianship. Uh, we, we were told you need a guardian by your financial advisor, Lori Schiller, who basically, they cannot get a hold of this woman right now, but this woman made the claim to the bank that she's unstable, so they told her not to get access to the money. Think about how scary that is, guys. Now, Wendy Williams probably has a few million bucks in the bank because she's a talk show host, so there's that, but she cannot get access to her money. So, what you need to do is very simple. You need to look at things as if the bank does not exist. What can you do to protect yourself? Yes, you need fiat money, which I hate that term. You need paper money, and you need it stuck in your house and away from the financial institution. You need that. The idea with this is that if something happens, if there is a close of the banks, now think about this, banks can get closed because of a storm. You could take out power, you could take out a power grid with a storm. You can also do this with sabotage, which could potentially be out there. Now, because I read so much, 40 different news stations and everything I have access to, you're seeing that this threat Hey, cyber attacks, bank cyber attacks, uh, you know, power grid going out. Sure are talking about this a lot lately, guys, and this is something that should scare the heck out of you and you should be ready for because you don't have access to it. Now, you need to have, you have to have a bank. You gotta pay bills. And my suggestion is to have a bank that you have the minimal amount in just to pay your bills in. Seriously, you need to protect yourself and have access to your cash. And now I have people on this channel that right now are jumping up and down. Dan, I've only got a few hundred dollars. And I have people that have that are on assistance, that are on the lowest income level of this country. But I have a few people, Dan, I've put together $200 in savings that if something happens and I can't get to my bank, and I've got it in small bills, I've got it in a large bill, and I'm protected. So this person could live basically for a month without having to get to the bank. Now, there are other people that have very expensive lifestyles out there that are on this channel and you need to protect yourself. You need to have access to money in your home. Now, here's the thing. You know, you're not gonna go put 40 grand inside your house. Some people will, some people will go to that step. You do not need that. You need to make sure that the bank you're dealing with is financially solvent. You need to make sure that, that you are not eligible for any bail-ins by the bank and that if there's anything that happens like that, that you are protected. And again, I've had people write the banks and had the bank write a statement, which I don't know if this is worth the paper it's written on, that if the bank was eligible for a bail-in, that they wouldn't be uh, subjected to losing their money. What is a bail-in? It's when the bank fails and they take your money. Kind of like Lebanon, okay? Just remember Lebanon. So it's that. Now, the next thing. Everybody is different. Everybody in this channel is different. And we have from, like I said, the lowest income level to people that have written me that have millions of dollars in the bank. You need to make sure that you have access to your money quickly. So again, hey, the ATM, I can go out and pull out 500 bucks, okay? That's not gonna do it. You need to have hard assets, a couple things, silver, okay? I like single ounces of silver. I love it, okay? I buy it whenever I can. I'm always looking at different places. And in the last couple years, I've accumulated a few ounces. Okay, let's put it that way. Now, the advantage to doing this is that money uh, comes and goes. Paper money, that is. Silver and gold has been around as currency forever, forever. Now, if you look at experts that talk about gold and silver and what it's worth, you know, you're going to see that, like I said, gold and silver has always been worth something, but I like things that are tangible. From the people I talk to, because the difference with me and 99% of everybody is I'm gonna to talk to absolutely every person I can talk to. 
And the reason for that is I want their input on what they think is going to happen. If the S hits the fan, uh, what's going to happen? You know, one thing I like to ask these silver guys is, hey, how much cash do you have on hand if we need to sell something quickly? Huh? What do you mean? How much cash do I have on hand? Well, the people that answer that say, oh, I have half a million dollars saved for a rainy day in cash so that if uh, silver and gold spike up, I can buy it. Well, here's the thing. I like to buy things that are no bigger than 10 ounce. This is a 10 ounce bar of pure silver, okay? I like to buy this size. And the reason for that is that, think about this. Yeah, you can get 100 ounce, you can get 1,000 ounce bars, but a wise man told me this uh, in the last year. You pay a premium for silver, you pay a premium for gold. If the S hits the fan and things skyrocket, what are you going to do? You're going to have an easier time selling an ounce of silver than you are 100 ounces. Now, 10 ounce right now, that thing's worth, you know, what's silver? $25, $26 an ounce right now, okay? $250, bucks, okay? But the premium, you're not getting the premium for this right now. Now, what is a premium? When you go out and you buy silver, you've got a spot price, okay? Let's just, I'm just going to use round figures. Let's say silver is at $25. Well, the different retailers, whether they're online or they're live, they will usually charge you a premium above the price of the silver, five, six dollars. Now, yesterday, I went out to somebody who uh, was selling different um, uh, silver from different sovereign nations. And there's like, I think there's like 16, 17 different sovereign nations that produce silver. I know someone's going to correct me on that, but you've got Australia, Africa, Mexico, uh, you've got, you know, uh, different places that sell silver, okay, Canada, okay, and here in the United States, same thing. Now, he had this thing called a Libertad, and they were way too expensive. He, my premium's going to have to be $18 a piece. Well, it doesn't have to be that for me. So, you can always turn this stuff down, but again, when you buy this stuff, you're going to have a premium. You do not have to have a lot of money to do this, but remember, gold and silver has always been money, always worth money. For an ounce of silver, or let's use gold, let's talk about gold for a second. Let's just say gold's at $1,950 an ounce right now. Well, people are like, I can't afford an ounce of silver. Now, if you buy a Cougar Rand or any of the Australian uh, uh, coins or anything from Canada or anything like that, you're gonna get a, a very high premium. Now, gold is sold in different increments. You can buy a tenth of an ounce. The cool thing is you can buy a gram of silver. Now, there are 28.35 grams in an ounce. So think about how tiny that would be. It's a little tiny speck. One time I was in a coin shop and the guy had grams of silver. Now think about that. 28, uh, $25 divided by 28. It was like the things were worth nothing. Okay. And they were little tiny. They looked like, you know, little Pez uh, uh, pieces of metal. So I'm like, oh, how many you got? He goes, well, these come in a little case and they equal an ounce. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Let me buy the whole thing. So, but again, I don't like things like that because they can get lost and you can lose them very easily. But again, the gram of silver right now is just under $65 for a gram of silver. The problem is you're going to pay a premium for that silver right now. And the premiums that I found could be $25, $30. So I saw that you could buy a gram of silver for $92. Now, think about this. When trouble hits, and if let's say gold spiked to $5,000 an ounce, um, no one's gonna give you a premium for that. So you've gotta get above your purchase price to have the thing be worthwhile. The closer you get to an ounce of silver, the easier it is to do that. Now, I love physical silver. I also love the silver and gold stocks because of the fact that when they strike and they hit something, they usually get purchased by a bigger company and they get swooped up and they get bought up. People don't want to hear that. People want the AMC and the uh, GameStop and the shenanigans of, you know, when Zoom went up $100 in a day, people want stuff like that. They don't want to sit on things. That's your choice. Now, here's the thing. You have to look at this for what it is. Uh, right now, People are very disturbed that uh, President Biden has mentioned this uh, digital dollar uh, potentially coming out. Now, what's going to happen is your freedom is going to be utterly destroyed. Now, think about this. Think about this channel. Let's just use this group right here. Um, you know, everybody knows I like baseball. Imagine if you sat there 
and you had somebody in charge of it that didn't like your baseball team. You can think how ridiculous that is. What if somebody doesn't like your politics? What if somebody doesn't like your religion and they're controlling your financial destiny with a digital dollar? You don't think that that matters? Your politics, uh, your religion. I mean, all this stuff is realistic that this could happen. And uh, you know, you can think I'm nuts and oh, people won't get that way and it would be independent. Well, look at the articles attached because they're left, they're right, it makes no difference. But the social credit score of what they're doing and you know, Oh, this guy likes NASCAR. He's an idiot. Let, let's shut his account down. Let's freeze the account. Let's limit his spending. That's what's going to happen. And again, I want to tell you guys something that happened. I had a client that came to me to get money from the EIDL loans. And this woman got approved for $160,000 from the SBA. Fantastic. They like, hey, listen, let us make a recommendation for you. Why don't you take just a portion of it right now that you need and then we can give you more money later. On a Thursday, she got $15,000. On Monday, she called the bank for more money and they were like, whoa, what the hell did you spend the 15,000 on? What do you mean you spent it already? That yeah, you need some serious financial management. And again, this is a business, guys. So they're, you know, they're, uh, they're dictating to her how she's gonna spend the money. It took her months to get the second payment. By that time, the company was destroyed during that time. Okay, so you don't think that this can happen to you, you're kidding yourself. Put together cash, put together assets that you could, you could have in your disposal that you are holding, that you have physically. Now, again, you can sell stocks, you can sell bonds, you can sell things like that, but the liquidity and getting them quickly, if there is a problem, you're going to have a serious issue with. Now, with the instability of the world right now, you have to look at this and for what it's worth because Wendy Williams, who's a millionaire, who can't get access to her money, is kind of sick. And think about this, somebody said she, she's mentally ill. You, you can't give her any of the money. Well, what if that person absconded with money and then said that, okay? Well, have you met Ted? Ted's an idiot. Ted likes uh, the Houston Astros and they're a criminal enterprise and uh, we shouldn't give Ted his money, okay? so. Think about this, guys. Protect yourself. Have assets that you can sell. Now, there are things with creating wealth and being your own central bank, and there are wealthy people out there that have recommend things like life insurance policies and borrowing against life insurance policies, and we can cover that for another day, and I'll cover that on I Allegedly Live when I have one speaker that's coming up who's an expert at this. But for your own financial stability and where you're at in this world, make sure that you're protected. If you don't do a financial tune-up, on your life, you are kidding yourself. You are you are you are you are heading to, uh, towards disaster right now because right now nothing that's happening right now leads us to believe that money, paper money, is going to be around. You have to have it, and the problem with it is you have to have gold and silver to convert to paper money. Okay, that's one thing. Now, that's the only way to buy things right now. Now. There are towns, there are places that will accept gold and silver right now as currency. And if there is a problem, you're going to see more and more of this in the future. That's going to happen. So it's always been worth money. It's always been God's currency. It's always been money through the history of time, gold and silver, regardless of where you're watching this, anywhere. But again, these central banks coming up with this uh, program, you have to be leery of. Jamie Dimon, who I think is an East Coast bougie country club douche, um, is telling me how bad Bitcoin is and how all uh, cryptocurrency is not backed by anything. Okay, I don't believe in it because I want something backed by a nation. Okay, Mr. Dimon, I guarantee you, mark my words, guys, there's going to be the JP Morgan coin that they're going to back, whether they call it the Jamie Dimon uh, bougie coin or whatever, it's going to happen. But again, that East Coast mentality that you and I are not part of, okay, that we're not a member of, we're not a friend of his, you have to take care of yourself and you have to protect yourself during this time. So your bank 
make sure your bank is, is viable. Make sure your bank that you do not have too much money in the bank. If you have money in a safety deposit box or, or assets in a safety deposit box, you're a fool. I have seen people, and if you read the comments down there, there are dozens of banks over the last week that have been closed five, six, seven days. Yeah, you can blame it on the health, health crisis. You can blame it on whatever you want. But with the advent of Walmart becoming a bank, with the advent of the post office taking over, you need to protect yourself and you need to have access to your money. Look at the community lenders, look at the credit unions that are more financially viable. You can get better loan rates and things like that too. Now, when it comes to buying gold and silver, I like to walk into the coin shops. It's one thing I like to do. But, uh, you know, the problem with it is to find somebody reputable locally that you can get. That's what you need to feel comfortable with. You're going to pay a premium. You're going to pay sales tax. Most of them will waive the sales tax if you hit a certain purchase level. So there's that. I had a subscriber and friend that was like, hey, I want to go with you. And a couple months ago. And, uh, I want to go with you and purchase some uh, silver and I'd like to buy some and see where you go. And I said, well, let's do this. Let me, let me show you what I'm up against and let's go try something brand new. So guys like, great, let's do this. This is awesome. So first place we walk into, it's like going to a used car lot guys. So what's your budget? Uh, what, Ooh, what our budget? Do you have silver single ounces? Sure. How much do you guys want to spend? What? No, 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 no. What do you have so we can look at it? Well, and my my friend immediately got upset. Hey, hey, listen, you know, don't worry about me with money. If I want to spend 40 grand here today, you know, what do you got? You got, do you have 1500 ounces here? Uh, no, I've got 30. Okay, well, again, why didn't you say that? Because I would have dealt with that up front. So from the guy that was trying to pitch us, they had 30 ounces in the store. Now, we're not buying anything from there, and I haven't been back since. But the second place we went to, pretty much the same thing. What do you got, what's your budget? Uh, what are you guys looking for, how much? And with that, they want to, um, they want to, uh, um, <clears throat> with that they want to size you up and, and, and have you give them your budget, which is ridiculous. I wanna buy one ounce. Do you have an ounce? How many do you have? Now, I ended up taking him to a guy I've dealt with in the past and recommended a lot of people to. And he just loved it because the guy ended up spending like two grand that day and bought different things. And here's the thing. You don't need to just buy silver ounces. Look at old currency. Look at old coinage, okay? And <clears throat> when it comes to coins, anything that's dated 1964 or below is made from 90% silver, dimes and uh, quarters. Huge investment opportunity and a huge chance to 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 invest in silver for a relatively cheap amount of money. Now you can look online and you can look at different places. And what I like to do is look online to different places, even if I haven't bought from them in the past, just to get an idea on what silver is selling for. So that when I walk into a store, if the guy has dimes, mercury dimes or uh, regular Roosevelt dimes, that I can, I can get the, the numbers. Now, here's the thing guys, think about this. When you buy these things today, and you pay the premium and the trouble comes and you've got to sell it or or you've got to use it for currency no one's going to negotiate your premium remember that so protect yourself know that your financial institution is having a problem right now if you don't believe that you're kidding yourself wells fargo's been around forever okay wells fargo's going to have a digital dollar and your social credit score think about what i just said okay what's that based on Okay, do you shop at Applebee's? Do you, do, you, do you eat there? Okay, are you less than the person that goes to Morton Steakhouse? Okay, not to me or not, but to the digital currency, uh, Jamie Diamond douche, are you that? Okay, let me know, okay? So, protect yourself, have assets, and also security. Security is a big thing because I meet a lot of wealthy people that have guest houses and go Dan come stay here with us and uh, what's your camera system like if I show up there oh we don't have cameras you're a fool okay you guys have to protect yourself you understand you can buy an online camera for thirty dollars that would attach to your iPhone and you'd be able to watch your house if anybody ever walked in there it's too expensive okay I don't have the time I'm not technology savvy okay then don't get one 
please understand that this is going to happen. There's going to be some type of bank failure that's going to flip a switch and you're then going to be locked out. What if this happens? What if the Ukraine situation escalates? Uh, you have to protect yourself. If you do not believe when, okay, let me back up. The President of the United States says that there's going to be food shortages. We need to look forward to that. People just gloss over that, okay? Maybe they just don't listen to this guy. Maybe that's the point. The point is you should listen. Listen to Dan. If you do not have food in the house, if you do not have protection in the house, if you do not have a way of living there for months on end, you are, you are going to be in serious, serious trouble. Now, I had one woman write me, I only like fresh food, Dan. I don't like boxed anything. So I'm going to find, you know, small markets to go buy food at and uh, I'm not really worried about it. Okay, okay. You know, the organic markets, guys, will be closed when trouble comes. It's just that simple. Now, again, the ATMs being down, your bank being down, protect yourself. Do not have too much money in the bank, but have it protected. You have to have a bank, you know, make sure that you have cash on hand, make sure you have assets on hand that could be traded as currency when there was a problem and to protect yourself and to maintain your wealth right now. Because as Wendy Williams gets knocked out, a $20 million plus, a $20 million plus account in Lebanon, they seized all those because they needed it for the bank and for the financial institution. What if they did that for everybody over $1,000, guys, here in the States? It would devastate everybody. So think about this figure with all the research I've done. If you had people go to the bank to withdraw their money, and by the way, when you make a deposit in the bank, that money's not there, sitting there waiting for you. That money's been lent out and used by the bank to, for, for other means right now. So if 1%, 1% of the worldwide uh, audience went out and hit their banks, there would be a bank run. There'd be a massive bank failure with only 1% of the people hitting the bank. That's insane, guys, when you think about that. There's not enough money out there to protect all of us right now. Now, again, we're seeing crazy things in the economy. You're seeing interest rates for houses hit 5%. You're seeing people that go out and they have to buy houses. They have to, um, you know, there's a house in Toronto. House in Toronto sold uh, a few years back for $995,000. Nice, beautiful house. The house during this time was listed at $1.995 million, okay? The house sold for six hundred thousand dollars above the asking price now the sellers they're, they're they're gonna sit in a beach because of that they're gonna six hundred thousand dollars is life-changing the idiots that bought the house that had to live in that house are stupid they'll, they'll never recoup that Canada real estate is is uh, is on the verge of a major collapse and everybody I've talked to has had nothing but problems and there's regions in Canada that they can't sell the houses at so share your thoughts on that stuff guys uh, you know, on everything right now. But again, protect yourself, get yourself ready, uh, have assets on hand, have things that you can, uh, you, that are tangible. Gold and silver are tangible, guys. They will be used for money. They've always been used for money. The speculation on the, on the mines, uh, mining stocks, I love that stuff, guys. But as far as the liquid gold happening, it, gotta have it in your house, guys. Share your thoughts on this. Let me know what you, what you think about all this. One thing that's very interesting is you get the exercise classes and yoga classes. But my favorite part of this whole thing is the guy sitting there in the middle playing the guitar while all these women are stretching. How do you get that gig? Okay. As we're all worried about central banks, this guy's probably got the greatest job in the planet Earth. So anyways, I don't play guitars <laughs> or I'd be there. La, 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 la. Anyways. Share your thoughts, guys. I've got great news, and I just spoke to the guitar player, and he's going to give me lessons. He said within a few weeks, I'm going to be able to take over and, and run the yoga event. So that's kind of nice. Uh, so you have that to look forward to, okay? Now, a couple things to finish this video off with. Uh, Walmart, uh, some of the stores are having trouble with sales, so much so that they're going to close Walmarts, which you don't hear of. They had one here in Irvine, California that closed. Uh, well, 
again, guys, I thought everybody broke shops at Walmart. Mm, maybe not. Louisville, Kentucky, they're closing. There's a couple other places that are gonna see uh, their uh, lights shutter forever. Uh, we are hearing that in the real estate market, because interest rates are going above 5%, that we are in a perfect storm for real estate. Okay, we'll see, because I think we are. Now, think about what I'm about to tell you. Talked about central banks and banking. There is a credit union called Notre Dame Federal Credit Union that I found on one of the banking sites I, I look at, where they are letting people that do not have social security numbers uh, sign up for an account and get an account. It means that they're not from this country and they are have access to a bank account. Now, I have had people write me dozens of times and says, my credit's not that good. I can't get a bank account. What do I do? And these people are getting bank accounts from uh, uh, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Now, the final thing is that when uh, they interviewed thousands of people and asked them about uh, the current state of the economy and the current state of their finances right now, 33% of the people said that they expect that the economy is going to get much worse over the course of the next year and that they are going to see a financial downturn in their lives. Now, that's a third of the people that they interviewed. And it wasn't nine people. It was, you know, like 1,500 people that they talked to from around the country. When you have this, prepare, guys. Look at things. You know, everybody's waiting for the day that the light switch gets flipped and we all go back to normal. And it's not going to happen, guys. Okay, remember that. So share your thoughts and everything. Uh, please don't forget to the like button. Please don't forget to the subscribe uh, button. Uh, don't forget I've got a Patreon channel you can sign up for. And uh, onward and upward, guys. I will see you guys very soon.